Now, from Hollywood, Romance. The dictionary definition of mother-in-law is short, clear, and to the point. Something like the mother of one's spouse. That's all. Only, of course, that isn't all, or there wouldn't be so many tired mother-in-law stories. We've got one for you this morning. A mother-in-law story, that is. Maybe just a little different than the ones you've heard. So now, with Helen Cleave as Stella, we bring you Kathleen Heights' transcribed romance, Home for the Weekend. I know I didn't make a word of sense on the phone. I was somehow taken completely off stride by the call. And just as I was beginning to react in anywhere near a normal fashion, Paul had hung up. For a minute or so, I sat there dumbly, his last words echoing in my ear. You'll love her, Mother. I'm bringing her home for the weekend. Are you all right, Stella? Oh, Emily. Yes, I'm all right. I really forgot you were here. It wasn't bad news. No, certainly not. Come on, dear. We'll go back to our coffee. I thought I heard you say the name Paul. Not that I was really trying to listen. It was Paul. He's coming up for the weekend. Oh, well, that's nice. He's not been home in quite a while, has he? Not since Christmas. He's bringing a girl with him. I believe he said they're engaged. You believe he said it? I believe he said it. <laughs> well, for heaven's sakes, I know he said it. I'm not sure whether he asked me to say nothing about it or to sing it from the housetop. <laughs> but I'll ask you not to mention it to anyone, Emily. Stella, would you like a little brandy? At 10 o'clock in the morning in my own living room? No, thank you, dear. Oh, don't be so solicitous, Emily. Paul isn't the first child of mine to bring his fiancée home. Well, this isn't like any other time, and you know it. Paul's not only your only son, he's your baby. Now, don't tell me that doesn't make a difference, because I know it does. Some, I suppose, but I... I think it's just the, the surprise of it. I had no idea. But that's it, I'm sure, just the surprise. Poor Stella. Now, Emily, I won't have that, that sympathetic tone and look. Good heavens, it's time Paul was married, and it's, it's wonderful that he's found his girl. Oh, no, I, I said the same things about my Robert. You know I did. And I wanted to mean them just as you do. I do mean them. I wonder what she's like. Mm -hmm. That's the hard part, when you don't even know who they are. My Robert, you know, brought a total stranger home. To this day, I've never gotten over the hurt, the heartache. I know, Emily. But surely you know that Robert never intended to hurt you, and I, I think that Jane is a lovely person. Do you? Yes, I do. Hmm. Well, I just hope you can be as charitable to Paul's young lady. It's all very well to be objective when you're not involved yourself. Oh, no. I've offended you, and I certainly didn't mean to. We're, we're old, old friends, Emily. I know you mean well enough, Stella. But let me tell you something. I know a little bit more about being a mother-in-law than you do. And I'll tell you this. If you're smart, you'll start off this very weekend getting the upper hand. Why? Why? Emily, I don't want the upper hand. I don't want to choose up sides and pull and tug Paul between us. I, I won't. You'd give... You'd give up your only son without a fight? I don't feel like I'm giving up anything. But you'll admit you're stricken when he called, and you're terribly upset about it this very minute. Surprised I am. Disturbed, even, but... but not for the reason you're assuming. What other reason is there? Don't you see? I, I'm so terrified that I'll be a mother-in-law. I don't know what to do. Oh, I don't see it at all. Why, what else could you be? Emily was the last person in the world I should have talked to. I meant exactly what I said about, about being a mother-in-law. And I was speaking, of course, of precisely the kind of mother-in-law Emily was. With the best of intentions, in her own mind at least, 
Emily had meddled, interfered, dominated, and very nearly ruined her son's marriage. I couldn't believe I'd do that to Paul, but... But then I, I wouldn't have thought Emily capable of such behavior either. I knew I'd have to be on guard every single minute. Why, Peggy. Hello, Mrs. Stewart. I hope you're not too busy to see me. No, no, of course not. Come in, dear. The house looks awfully nice. You've made some changes since I was here last. Oh, few. Nothing very special. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Well, yeah, it's been a long time, Peggy. How's your work at the paper? Oh, like always. Luncheons, dinners, teas, baby showers, marriages. Which, of course, is what brings me here. Oh? Are the happy pair in town yet? I'm sure I know the answer, but who have you been talking to? Emily Thayer covers the town better than I do, Mrs. Stewart. I should have known better. Peggy, I, I don't know what to say. Well, let me help you. What's her name? Where's she from? Will it be a June wedding or... I don't know what I'll say to Emily. This was cruel and so uncalled for. Don't blame her. She means well. I'm not at all sure she does. But that's another matter. I'm sure that Paul means to see you, Peggy, and talk. <laughs> yes, and I'm sure he does. I wouldn't put anything in the paper just yet. You weren't planning anything, a tea or a luncheon to introduce her? No, nothing. I, I guess Paul just thought we'd get acquainted this weekend. I... Well, when the time comes, let me know the details. Of course, Peggy, when the time comes. I'll let myself out. I imagine you have lots to do. No, everything's under control, as Paul would say. Well, uh, the house looks lovely. I hope everything goes well and everything. Oh, my heavens, they're here. <gasps> oh, no. Well, where can I... Hey, anybody... Oh. Hi, Peg. I'm sorry, Paul. I was just leaving. Well, it's okay. Don't rush off. Hi, Mom. Hello, Paul. And this must be... Carol. Carol Scott, Mother. And Peggy Mitchell. It's nice to meet you, Carol. How do you do, Mrs. Stewart? Miss Mitchell? How do you do, Miss Scott? Now I must go. I hope I haven't spoiled anything. Not at all, Peggy. Well, no. Of course not, Peg. Well, goodbye, all of you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Well, goodness, come in, sit down. I'm sorry, honey. I wish it hadn't happened that way. I'm sure we all wish it hadn't, Miss Scott. Well, might as well make ourselves at home, huh? Well, there it was, the worst possible beginning for all of us. Nobody meant it to be, but in 60 seconds' time or less, my son, his fiance, and I were quite on the defensive. We sat, the three of us, perched on the edge of our chairs and made the most idiotic attempts at conversation I believe I've ever heard. Until Paul finally said the car had been acting up and he'd take it down to the garage. I would cheerfully have taken it down myself. Um, Paul says you're quite a gardener. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I try. Love poking around in the earth good rich earth like we have up here are you interested in gardening oh no i'm well i mean i i love seeing a beautiful garden but uh, i'm just not the type i guess i wasn't either <clears throat> that is uh, i'd never done any of it until i was married paul's father well there's no other way to say it he had a green thumb i guess i caught it from him well, I suppose that's the way to make a success of marriage. I mean, uh, take up your husband's hobbies. Well, I... I guess you find your own way to make a marriage a success. <clears throat> oh, my goodness, I haven't shown you to your room yet. Uh, no, you haven't. Well, come along. I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner. You probably want to freshen up. Fine. I bet you'd like a nap, too. Oh, no, I'd never take naps. They seem like such a waste of time to me. Oh, well, whatever you like. 
but, but if you'd want to take one, I mean, please go ahead. Don't mind me. No, the... no, I'm not one for naps much either. Well, it's something we have in common anyway. <laughs> yes. Here we are. Oh, what a nice room. I'm glad you like it. It was Mary's room. She's one of Paul's older sisters. Yes, I know. He's talked about all of you a lot. Oh? Uh, she's married to Andy, isn't she? That's right. Well, I've met him. Didn't Paul tell you? No. That is, I, I don't think he did. I should have. We had a wonderful evening together, the three of us. Oh, um, a couple of weeks or so ago. Andy was in the city? Uh, on business. I was sure Paul would have written you about it. Oh, Paul's not much of a correspondent. Oh, not that I'm complaining. I, I didn't mean it that way. It's just that he's not a hand to write letters. Paul? Well, I was gone for four days the last of February, and he wrote twice a day and phoned every night. Wasn't that nice of him? Oh, oh, I didn't mean anything by that, Mrs. Stewart. I'm sure you didn't, nor did I. I just thought he might have written about our evening with Andy because, well, Andy had such wonderful things to say about you. I'm glad. I'm very fond of Andy. He said you were just the perfect mother-in-law, that, that you never interfered or, or butted in or volunteered opinions. Well, you know, don't you? <laughs> We will return to romance and our story, Home for the Weekend, in just a moment. And now for the second act of Romance. mother-in-law, never interfered or butted in or volunteered opinions, Andy's description of me by way of Carol. I was far from insulted, but I, I must say this little accolade doubled my determination to stay out of Carol's and Paul's approaching marriage. May I help you with dinner, Mrs. Stewart? Oh, no, thank you. Pretty well underway. These are just the last-minute things. Uh, Paul's taking a shower. He said he'd be down soon. No hurry. I'll bet I know what you're having for dinner. Oh? That wonderful baked pork chop casserole of yours. I'm afraid I am. Seems like the older I get, the less imagination I have about cooking. Oh, now you're, you're being modest, I'm sure. Because Paul talks of nothing else but what a wonderful cook you are. He's just used to it. I hope you'll give me some of your recipes, Mrs. Stewart. The ones he likes, particularly. Oh, my goodness, I, I don't have recipes, really. I'm one of those maddening, a pinch of this, a speck of that, a handful of something else cooks. And, and besides, you'll have recipes of your own. Well, I can scarcely cook at all. I think that's why I've heard so much about your cooking. <laughs> Paul shouldn't talk so much about it. Uh, Mrs. Stewart, after dinner, uh, do you have any old picture albums? I mean, uh, pictures of Paul when he was a baby and growing up. I'd love to see them. May I have that salad oil there? Oh, certainly. Thank you. Pictures? Well, I, I wouldn't have the slightest idea where they were, Carol. I, I'm sure they're around somewhere, but they're just like any family pictures, I imagine. Oh, I, I just thought you might have some. Don't you and Paul have plans for after dinner? The good movie Aunt the Strand, or so I understand. Oh, I don't think we plan to go out. Uh, un unless, of course, you'd like to see the pictures. No, no, I don't care about it. Uh, could I set the table or anything like that? It's all set. It just feels so useless. Nonsense. I'm sure you're very efficient. Did Paul tell you that? No, but... Mrs. Stewart, has he told you anything about me? 
Well, not a great deal. Actually, he told me that I'd love you and that he was bringing you home for the weekend. He told me I'd love you, too. Well, I, I think our dinner's about ready. Would you like to call, Paul? Oh, hey, this is the way it ought to be, isn't it? A guy and both his gals in front of the fire. It's a wonderfully comfortable room, Mrs. Stewart. It's so livable. Thank you. We've done an awful lot of living in it. Well, you ought to see Carol's apartment, Ma. Modern, sleek, everything so, well, striking, I guess you'd say. Your mother wouldn't like it, Paul. It's much different. Oh, I'm sure it's lovely. I like it because she's there. Well, Mom, have you given her orders? What on earth? Oh, you know, Paul always gets a little cold in March. He says he doesn't, but he should wear his muffler and a hat. Oh, really, Paul? I'll bet that was the first thing she said, huh, Carol? No. No, she didn't mention that. Um, let's see. After that... Oh, I know. He won't eat lamb no matter how you disguise it. So if you want lamb, have it for lunch when he's not around. Oh, honestly, Carol, <laughs> I don't know where he's getting all this. I'm sure I never said anything of the kind. Not to me, Mrs. Stewart. Well, wait a minute. There's more. There certainly is not. Oh, I know. It's that picture of me, aged six months, sprawled on a white bear rug. Now, I know you've seen that, Carol. Paul, please. <laughs> no, it seems your mother couldn't remember where she put the pictures. <laughs> are you kidding? That one's on her dressing table in a little gold frame. What are you doing, Mom, holding out on her? Don't be silly, Paul. You know, I, uh, I think I'm, I'm getting a little headache. If you don't mind, I'll say good night now. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Can I get anything for you? Well, Mom's got a million home remedies, Carol. She'll fix you up in no time. No, thanks. I'll be all right if I just lie down. It was such a nice dinner and evening, Mrs. Stewart. I wish I could do something to make you feel better. No, I'll be fine, thanks. Don't bother coming along, Paul. I'll see you in the morning. You're sure you're okay? Don't worry, darling. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Stewart. Good night, Carol. That's funny. She never gets headaches. If you think I should do something. No. No, not if she says not. You don't like her, do you? Why, of course I do. I I don't know her. How could I? But it, she's quite attractive. Only you don't like her. Paul. Look, Mom, I know you and I know her. Now, neither of you is acting like yourself. I know you don't know each other. That's why I brought her up here this weekend, so you could get acquainted. Well, I, I don't understand. I... I'm not trying not to get acquainted. Well, something's wrong. I, I never saw you act so stiff before. What is it? Is it Peggy? Peggy? Well, you know, are you on her side? Do you think I'd marry her? Is that what you two were consoling yourselves about when we got here this morning? Oh, now that's unfair, Paul. We weren't consoling each other. Peggy just happened to drop by, and the, the timing was unfortunate this morning, but it wasn't at all what you seemed to think. Okay, I didn't have to say that. I'm sorry. I just wanted everything to be so great, and it isn't. I'm sorry. Oh, what is this, Mom? I'm sorry. You're sorry. This isn't like us. I know. Paul, can you believe that I wanted everything to be so great, too? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Only whatever it is, give Carol a break, will you? I love her, and I'm going to marry her. If you love her, I want you to marry her. Well, then let her know it. Come off this strange perch of yours and be yourself, will you? I'm going to bed. I doubt that much sleep went on in the house that night. How long it took me to unravel all my defenses and get down to the core of the problem, I don't know. But as the saying goes, in the cold light of the dawn, things look different to me. I got up early, bathed and dressed, and got as far as the kitchen door. Paul, please, I don't want to argue with you about your mother. I'm just trying to understand, that's all. Well, then understand. It isn't that she doesn't like you. She just doesn't know you. And she's not going to know me if she doesn't try a little. I wanted to talk to her yesterday. I tried. 
She wouldn't even talk about you. I told you she's upset about something. And that something is me. Don't you see, Paul? It has to be me. You're mistaken about that, Carol. I am. Well, you heard our little lover's quarrel, huh, Mom? I wow. did. And I think maybe it's a good thing, don't you, Carol? I think any change will be an improvement, Mrs. Stewart. Now, take it easy, Carol. She's right, Paul. Pour me some coffee, one of you. Oh. Let me. Thank you. Yeah, good coffee. Who made it? My friend across the table. Carol, and Paul, too, but mostly you, Carol. I owe you such a complete apology. I don't want you to apologize to me. That isn't what I meant. Then we'll call it an explanation. If no one else would like to hear it, I rather would myself, because I've been such a stupid old fool. Now, Mom, don't. Paul, go but... tinker with the car or something. Well, I don't think either of you'd be safe. Your mother's right, Paul. Okay. Good luck. I really love him, Mrs. Stewart. I really do, too. And I was so determined not to interfere, not to insinuate myself on your lives that I... <laughs> that I really overcompensated a little, don't you think? You know, I'd like to walk in your front door for the first time right now. I've got a better idea, dear. Let's walk up to the attic together instead. The attic? The picture albums are up there. <laughs> I knew exactly where they were all the time. Uh, about that pork chop <laughs> recipe. I think I can give it to you. And he really doesn't like lamb? Oh, no matter how you disguise it. <laughs> oh, and about the muffler. He actually is subject to colds in March. He says he isn't, but he should wear his muffler. And his hat. Mm-hmm. Now, let me see. Surely there's some more. Mother. Hmm? Please. After Paul and I are married, interfere just a little, won't you? <laughs> oh, I really believe that's the nicest invitation I ever had. Romance is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, with editorial supervision by Hep Mannheim. You have heard Home for the Weekend, specially written for romance by Kathleen Hike, starring Helen Klebe. Featured in the cast were Anne Morrison, Eve McVeigh, Vic Perrin, and Virginia Christine. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to hear Romance, transcribed next week at this same time.